Exo Group, Insider Terms for Outsiders, by Simone Hansen and Anna Smith. As someone who grew up in a very small community before heading off to a much larger city for college, I found there are many differences in how a community reacts toward insiders and perceived outsiders of those communities. And something that really stood out to me is how I never really heard anybody make like insults or comments about newcomers to the area. The most someone would say would be like, oh, they're not from around here or something in like the Bellingham area. In comparison, back on Orcas Island, we make those comments all the time about, you know, outsiders. It should be noticed that we don't always um, insult people all the time, but a lot of times if we use the word tourist, we are insulting them, while the word visitor is more of a polite term if we're talking about an outsider. And these terms are called exagroup terms or outgroup terms. This difference between these communities caused me to be curious, and that's what created this idea, what causes a community to create and use an exogroup term. Communities, as we all, as most of us know, can be based off of many different things. And so, to shorten our research question, we decided to only focus on location-based communities, which are the easiest communities to separate out from a group of people. Um, so for this project, we're separating a community based off of not only the linguistic norm of an exogroup term, but also how closely they live together. However, this is not based off of like everybody lives in a city or everybody lives in a county. Instead, it's based off of how the people in the community are identifying where that boundary lies. Now, something that you might have noticed is that our research project is a little bit different from other social linguistic projects. To be exact, I'd say it's a little bit backwards. Normally, to start a research project, you have to first identify the speech community. And because you, then the reason that we identify the speech community is that if you don't select your speech community correctly, the whole experiment can be set back. And they may have to be forced to restart it, or even their reports will just kind of be nothing like they, they won't actually get good information from the re the research they did because their speech community didn't match uh, for this project however it's less about which speech communities we're interviewing and more about how do people identify the speech community they are, they are a part of so the speech community is more of a separation after we've interviewed people um, it should be noted that we are planning for this project to be interviewing people that we're in-group members of, so I would probably focus around Orcas Island or the San Juan community, while my partner Anna Smith would probably focus more on the Bellingham community. So after describing what our project is going to be about, now it's time to talk about what is in our literature review, what data is already out there. So. Societies identify people as outsiders by identifying the differences in language use between communities. This is the most common way that people identify outsiders. And many times that this separation from outsiders is based on of someone's sex or race or religion or national origin. They're like, you're not part from here, but they can't be racist or sexist. So they're specifically pointing out a language quirk that they do not like. Um, however, according to Shulman, if you adopt those language quirks of the in-group, then the discrimination that you face will decrease immensely. But even though it decreases, according to mass, you, you can still face discrimination. And this can happen based off of the speech that the two groups will use when they refer to each other. Uh, for example, there's this um, model called the Linguistics Intergroup Bias Paragram, which basically says that people tend to express desirable in-group and undesirable out-group behaviors in abstract terms, while unfavorable in-group and favorable out-group behaviors tend to be used concrete terms. For example, if someone in your in-group pushed someone, you'd say, oh no, you only bumped him. While if someone in your out-group pushed someone, you'd be like, he shoved him! You'd use different terms to have similar meanings, but one is more abstract and one is more concrete, depending on your relation to the person doing the action. Um, this right here is the kind of language that's relevant for this project. And we're not looking at language qu quirks, but instead we're looking at the use and creation of a specific language term, which is an exogroup term. Why is this group using this term to refer to other people? And these exogroup terms are a kind of jargon known as cants. Cants are a specific kind of jargon or language used by a group that was created for the sake of excluding the outgroup. 
Cants are known for being created by groups who are, who are hated or threatened by the outgroup, though not always. For example, thieves' guilds were known for creating a bunch of cants to disclude potential threats from listening in. So they'd be like, if they're planning like a heast or something, they'd use, you know, cants. So even if a language community doesn't go out of the way to create clants and exclude Asuka, sorry. So even if a community doesn't go out of their way to create cants to exclude outsiders, outsiders can still be discriminated in other ways. But for this project, we're going to be focusing on discrimination that people have gone out of their way to do. So our online survey would have been mated with SurveyMonkey because SurveyMonkey can separate data based off of the answers received. So you don't just need to have A or B as the answer. You could have like the word Washington separate everybody that wrote the word Washington out. So it's a lot easier to separate relevant data because people's answers could differ greatly. And there's a lot of open-ended answers in our survey. Um, the survey would first be emailed to a whole bunch of students and teachers at Western Washington University, but it would also be shared online on different Facebook groups that the members of this research proje project are, mem are members of, such as Orcas Island Rant and Rave and The Brits List. Also, within this survey, we would ask people, if they can, to please try sending this to five other members of their community using the snowball method. Our survey questions could be basically split up between three different kind of questions. First questions, which um, are about the speaker. They're basic facts, like how old are they? Where do they live? To get an idea about the surveyor. The second groups are the surveyor's relationship with the community that we're talking about. Like, do they feel like they're a member of this community? And different questions such as that. And they're and the, th the last set of questions are basically questions based off of how the community relates to surveyors and their perceptions of outsiders. For example, one of our questions was, can you rank on a scale to one, which is hard, and five, which is easy, how identifiable outsiders are? I really like this idea, which is why I picked it, but I think it's a little bit too ambitious. The problem is, there isn't a lot of research on this subject, so in a way, I delved into a deeper subject than I probably should have. Um, the, so rather than identifying what causes a community to create an exit term, it'd make more sense to do a project about how a specific community can use those terms and feels about the terms, and if outsiders even notice the term, and keep the cause research on the back burner until we learn more about the communities and more about the terms themselves. Because there isn't really much about this. 